Hey, Monday Night Raw was last night. No excuse for this either of why we've waited this long to talk about other than I just didn't really want to talk about it for the whole show. But at least to be the uh, main chair on a Raw review, it could have been a lot worse for me. I did not think this was a bad show. I think, honestly, the worst thing you can say about this show was... It was three hours long, and if it was two hours long, it would have been a hell of a lot tighter. But I did like some of the stories that they were telling uh, throughout the thing. Although, in the land of WWE, whether you are babyface partners with each other or whether you are heels, you are not going to like the person you are standing next to or traveling with or anything else, as we have seen some seeds of discontent uh now get dropped between bobby lashley and mvp so we can add them to the pile of of people who don't trust each other inside wwe but i guess as that's taking place filthy uh kevin owens and seth rollins are starting to fortify their relationship a little bit more as they all lead into going into day one to face off for Big E's world heavyweight championship and that's how this show started and that's how it ended Yes, Mike, against all odds, it appears that Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins can indeed coexist. As you mentioned, they fortified their relationship uh, despite losing in the main event in kind of embarrassing fashion. Bobby Lashley just, he was teaming with Big E, but he basically beat up both of the guys. He, he ran through Big E uh, with a spear. He then ran through Kevin Owens with a spear and won the match essentially single-handedly uh but afterwards seth rollins and big e or i'm sorry seth rollins and kevin owens uh were able to lay out both big e and lashley with the steel steps uh you mentioned earlier seeds of discontent between bobby lashley and mvp and that was what opened up the show and led to the main event, which I just mentioned, um, and was, you know, kind of alluded to throughout the show as Lashley threw MVP to the Wolves in the opening segment, or, you know, Big E. Yeah, that was that was a, a, a interesting way that the show opened because Lashley and MVP come out, and obviously they are back together now that MVP is, was coming off of injury. They put him back together again, and. MVP was out there. He was basically overselling Bobby's accomplishments of facing off against everybody last week compared facing Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and Big E to running and winning the Boston Marathon, scoring a triple-double in the NBA Finals, and then going five rounds with Francis Ngannou and then knocking him out. What, in the in the post-fight press conference? <laughs> like, how does that work exactly? But Well, he, if uh, it went through a draw... I believe that the, they could then go to the extra round, <laughs> as if they, as if they're in the. Uh, is that how it worked in the, uh, the? Wasn't that Ultimate Fighter? That's how that one worked. Would you know anything about that show and how that works? Well, that's how it worked in the elimination fight between Demetrius Johnson and Ian McCall, like ten years ago for the flyweight title when they had a draw and were supposed to go to the extra round, and the judges screwed up on the adding the scorecards and instead gave the decision to mighty mouse on the spot and they had to go back and declare it a draw so it is amazing how many times that has happened in boxing and mixed martial arts over the years and how nobody gets strung up or beaten or sued or anything for that it's just amazing but that's a different story for a different day but Big E, of course at that point comes out says hats off and cheese curds to you i'm still I mean, it's Milwaukee. I mean, I know it's a lot of cheese and everything, but like Wisconsin, wouldn't that be kind of where you'd want to use that joke? Maybe he was just really hungry for poutine. I don't know what exactly it was, but Big E called MVP Iceberg Slim, tried to dog him for hitting him in the knee uh, with the cane last week, and Lashley grabbed the mic and said, well, you know, he, he did hit you with the cane, but I, I didn't need him to do that, and in fact... You know, I don't need him at all. I can beat you myself, and and MVP can beat you too, because that's what he said. So, P, why don't you get in there with your cane, and why don't you face off against Bobby Lashley? And as he does that, or uh, face off against Big E, as Lashley says that, he leaves the ring. He backs up. The camera's at his back. MVP's got the cane. He's feeling good about himself. And then probably the highlight comedy point of the night for me is when Seth Rollins in a like yellow and brown plaid suit 
out of nowhere, Screen Right comes diving out and jumps on Bobby Lashley's back with Kevin Owens right behind him. They start beating him down. Uh, Big E comes out to try to help. He gets into it with everybody, too. Everybody starts fighting. Lashley and Big E send the other two packing. That's how the segment closes, and ultimately, that's what sets up the tag match main event. From there... We got a Bianca promo before her match against Dewdrop. She's the EST, and she's going to end this thing between the two of them. So that took place. Back from a break. Owens and Rollins, they argue Mike, back. Yes. You know what was left off of the Hulu version that I watched? What's that? Bianca and Dewdrop. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Out of all the things. Because I did see... That finish, I, I should have thought about that. I saw the finish, which was hot, and I would have loved to see the rest of the match because the crowd was up on their feet going crazy yeah. wow. for the KOD. <laughs> that was the hot, I mean, uh, so, okay, so after she cuts that promo, Owens and Rollins are arguing backstage. This is when Adam Pierce and Sonny hear him, and they say, we're going to make the biggest tag match in Raw history. All the people that have been on Raw, but this, this is going to be one of the biggest matches in history. So they make the match for later on. Owens and Rollins aren't happy about that. But then we go to the ring for that Bianca Belair Dewdrop match, which went about 12 minutes. It went through a commercial break. And <laughs> those two are not Bailey and Sasha together, but they work really well with each other and can accent each other really, really well. And... The spot that I thought everybody had seen that they would want to show off was Dewdrop had missed a splash off the second rope, and then Bianca picked her up, hoisted her up on her shoulders, walked her into the middle of the ring, and delivered the KOD. And as soon as she started getting her up on her shoulders and started to move, the fans started getting their feet. They started to pop. This was not just the overlay of audio that WWE will put over something, the, the track of the fans cheering. You can actually see fans getting up, throwing their hands in the air, and cheering as she hits this KOD. Crazy impressive finish that everybody was into, and they got the pin. I cannot believe, actually, they left that off. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, it could have been user error on my part, but I don't remember seeing it as <laughs> see, I watched I see. it. But I, I, I did remember double, seeing Austin Theory. If you accidentally Theory, hit fast forward, go back. So. <laughs> I did remember seeing Austin Theory, you know, theorize that Vince McMahon's love of him is because of all these great selfies that he's taken so far. He, yeah, he he was in there next against Finn Balor, and this was another one that went through one of the uh, the commercial breaks, and ultimately Theory hit a. I'll say this: he hit a really sweet uh, seated springboard Spanish fly on Finn Balor, uh, and then <laughs> tried to take a selfie uh, as he pinned him, which led to a reversal and a two count for Balor. Balor then reversed the TKO, hit a shotgun drop kick, and then to coup de gras for the victory in about nine minutes. And even though Finn. Balor got his shine, got to celebrate at the end. It was very much uh, noted that Austin Theory had screwed up again. And there's a point a little bit later on where he's about to go into Vince McMahon's office, but he's disappointed and he he decides he's not going to do that. So that's where we get that. Then we get a we get a, a video package uh, from Ms. TV last week where Ms. thanked to almost uh, for. We see that, and then we see Miz thanking Omos for talking to him. AJ Omos. Styles, Omos. AJ Styles walks up, and and uh, he's very excited about his future with Omos, but uh, Omos still seems to be acting a little bit shady towards AJ. Uh, Miz is just happy because he wants something that's going to be better than his wife uh, on the cutting edge. So, long story short, Miz got in a dig against Urban Meyer, but AJ was praising Omos. Miz basically cuts Omos's promo for him or Omos's promo for him that he can't cut, basically saying that, you know, AJ is, is kind of in his way and he's he's holding him back and he's he's holding him down. And when Styles went to question Omos, for some reason, the Mysterio's music hits and they come out. Why? If these two guys who you're about to have a match with are about to kill each other, why did you decide to come out then? And if you did, why didn't you just come out with some popcorn as if you were the Street Profits to, to see what happened? Didn't really get that there, Tom. Well, I will give the Mysterios a benefit of the doubt because perhaps if they had waited for 
Omas, who you almost said Omas, but you said Omos. (laughs) (laughs) If they had waited for Omas to beat up AJ, perhaps they wouldn't have had a match in the first place. So they at least waited until Omas was almost at his wit's end to then come out, which led to them picking up the win when AJ almost tagged in Omas, but Omas refused the tag. And he was AJ was rolled up by Rey Mysterio. And then Omas laid out AJ Styles after the match and said the next time he sees him, it'll be in a match, which I, Mike, I seriously can wait for that because I do not want to see AJ Styles lose to Omos, and I have a feeling that's exactly where this is headed. Hey, you won't be waiting very long, brother, man. It's going to be next week, and one thing they noted during this match was AJ Styles is getting played out online by Grayson Waller of NXT 2.0, and AJ is going to show up there tonight to face off against Grayson Waller. I have a feeling that Omos is going to be there, too, and maybe Styles and Omos can can work on some things uh, before their match coming up next week. As you noted, Omos walked away from him, threw down the microphone on him, Called him a trash ass, and and that was that. He was out of there. We at least got one great still shot of his face. Uh, also, as we're we're getting close on time here, too. Randy Orton defeated Chad Gable. Went about three minutes. Otis went after Randy Orton. Somehow evaded three Orton RKO's. How did that happen? It's because he's got no neck, which bled to the line. No neck. No wreck. So if you're going to see a new T-shirt from Gable and Otis, it's probably going to look like that. One of the key things that happened here, too, is MVP questioned Lashley in the locker room about, you know, hey, man, were you going to help me out, you know, in that deal with Lashley, we, me and the cane and everything? And Lashley blew him off. And that was notable, and that's going to be a storyline that's going to continue on as we keep going uh, with this feud. Damian Priest counted out against Dolph Ziggler, beat up Bobby Roode on the floor. That sets up Damian Priest and Dolph Ziggler next week as well, too. Veer Mahan is still coming to Raw. Rhea Ripley with a quick win over Queen Zelina. And then when we get back in the short little segment, we will get Tom's thoughts on Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch. And all how all that went down. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. This was one of those things where, Tom, great concept. I like what they did. I like doing something like that out of the ordinary. But they had to make it to WWE where they had multiple camera angles and things that didn't make any sense. And I thought they got too cute with it. And they're letting Liv Morgan talk way too much with too much verbiage written out for her. What would you think about that? What do you think about her and Becky Lynch? Well, I thought after viewing this segment that everyone else in this promotion is playing checkers. And these two, these two are playing chess at the level of Kasparov and Deep Blue. (laughs) (laughs) Becky Lynch set Liv Morgan up to attack her unexpectedly and had a doppelganger in the ring waiting. And then Liv Morgan like magically appears inside the ring and none of the trainees saw her or stopped her. This was just too much for me. Uh, I like you said, I like stuff that's outside the box, but Hey, it's Christmas season. Maybe this one should go back in the box underneath the tree. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem Max, smarten up. To this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You are being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.